This time on Movie Show Plus, Greg Russell interviews the cast of Unbroken, Path to Redemption. Yeah, for some reason when we get into these situations, then other things just start to pile on and I have to believe that, that a lot of that has to do with our mentality. Tom Santilli reviews a couple new documentaries hitting theaters and will give you the first glimpse of the newest marvelous Marvel movie. So you're not from around here. It's hard to explain. All that, plus a whole lot more, coming up on Movie Show Plus. Michi, come here, come here. There's a small foot dialing in that wants to talk to us. Hello, Migo and Michi, can you hear me? One, two, one, two, hello. <laughs> I love how they talk, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hello, small foot. The hate you give. The hate you give. Little infants. Little infants. F's everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama and Daddy were born in Garden Heights. Mama left the garden when she was a little girl, and she wants us to get out too. Daddy says our life is here, because our people are here. It's about a young black woman kind of finding her voice. It's about speaking up, being heard. It's really about family and community. Star! <laughs> What's up? Star lives in different worlds, her lower income black community and her white private school. Garden Heights is one world, Williamson is another. So when I'm here, I'm Star version two. She's constantly having to split herself into two parts in order to fit into both worlds. I have to hide who I am. When I'm at home, I can't be too Williamson. When I'm here, I can't act too Garden Heights. This is about her awakening, this is about her journey and really realizing I'm gonna be who I wanna be. That's all challenged when this really tragic event happens. Go back where he told you. Khalil, I'm not playing, go back. <laughs> what did you do? She's the one and only witness. And now she is faced with the dilemma of, does she speak out? So when you're ready to talk, you talk. It's really challenging for a star to think about the level of responsibility that she'll take on in being public. I need to speak for him. It's about black people, poor people, everybody at the bottom. No matter who you are, find your purpose. Whatever you're here for, speak up and be heard. You too can get out here and be about change. Don't ever let nobody make you be quiet. Everybody who experiences struggle can take that struggle and turn it into something golden. We live in a complicated world. No, it doesn't seem that complicated to me. As a generation, it's time that we stand up and start taking responsibilities for our communities and take them back. The movie gives a message that's, you know, very real, but also very, very hopeful. I love being a part of a film that I think is really culturally, politically critical. And that's what's hot in Hollywood. Bless you, Lewis. Welcome home. All of Torrance was praying for your safe return. Miracles didn't save me, Padre. A couple of atomic bombs did that. <laughs> You're Louis Ambrini, aren't you? Thank you. For what? For preserving the free world for silly girls like me. <laughs> when things are going bad for mm. some reason, especially for your character, they just go bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's a, that's it's it's a um it's an it's a common experience. Mm -hmm. I feel like. You know, the, 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 there's a reason that people say when it rains, it pours, you know, <laughs> or whatever colloquialism that you yeah. want to use. Uh, if that's just, did I use that word correctly? Yeah. Good. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, so, anyway, the point is, is that, yeah, for some reason, when we get into these situations, then other things just start to pile on, and I have to believe that, that a lot of that has to do with our mentality and the way that we look at things, right? Um, so that this movie specifically, really, I think that's a, that's a subtextual kind of thing that's going on with, with Lou. Um, that once he starts to understand and go, oh wait, hold on, this is, this is another way that I can process this, this particular situation, that is what really ends up changing a lot for him. 
people from all over the country want to know if you're going to run in the London Olympics. What's this? If you're going to train for London, you have to do it right. Just go nice and easy, see if you can make it all the way around. You think you can run a four seven mile again? I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. In the beginning of the movie, of course, everything's good. He comes back in the yeah. morning, hanging out on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Sees this lady and it's kind of like, wow. Yeah, I think she was charmed right away. Mm -hmm. I'm very and, charming. And Yes, yes, very charming. Yes, you are. <laughs> Midwest thing. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, That's what we're known for. Wasn't hard. Wasn't hard. Yeah, no, they have a very fast whirlwind romance. You yeah. kind of fall in love immediately. Right. Which was fun to play. Yeah, and it was. They're really cute scenes. When yeah. they first yeah. meet, you feel it. These men did terrible things to you. What are you going to say to them? Michi, come here, come here. There's a small foot dialing in that wants to talk to us. Hello, Migo and Michi, can you hear me? One, two, one, two, hello. <laughs> I love how they talk, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hello, small foot. Hello, hey, glad to see you both. Now tell me, what's your movie about? Uh, I'm sorry, what's a movie? Oh wait, is that that thing where you project a series of images in rapid succession to a large group of people who've come to see a good story? Yes, that's exactly it, you got it. Oh, well, uh, this movie <laughs> will blow your minds. I mean, you get to meet my boy Migo, who makes this epic discovery. It turns our home above the clouds upside down. Look, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is epic! <laughs> it's all big. It's big action. It's big laughs. Big emotion. I mean, big. Like, bigger than even me. As you can expect, it gets a little hairy. <laughs> you, you see what I did there, Harry? Because, you know, well, we're hairy, obviously. All right. Now, I've heard a lot about SES. What is that? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm so glad you asked that. You happen to be speaking to the group's founder. SES means Small Foot Evidentiary Society. They're the coolest, funniest, weirdest group of friends. We make it our mission to prove that Migo is right that Smallfoot are real, and that this whole other world exists beyond this one Yeti village on the top of a mountain above the clouds. We collected all of these bizarre artifacts like, like this. We call it the Scroll of Invisible Wisdom. <laughs> Seriously, what the heck is on this thing? I got you a good film, and what would you say this movie's overall message is? I think this movie is really about the search for truth and really understanding that there's no reason to be afraid of each other just because we're different. Yeah, stand up to that stonekeeper. I mean, I had to risk eternal banishment from my village. I don't know if you know this, but there's not a lot of choices when it comes to finding a new place to live up here. It's like snow, 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 rock, snow, snow. Not a lot of choices, okay? All right. Migo, Michi, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. You are more than welcome. Have an awesome day, and you, my friend, you've been the best. And remember, Yeti or not, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Check out MovieShowPlus.com to watch this episode online and for exclusive content, extended interviews with Greg Russell, and a complete archive of movie reviews with Tom Santilli. Also, make sure to like and follow us on social media and on our Movie Show Plus YouTube channel. Being empowered starts with getting informed, looking closer. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. But many of us don't know there are different types of breast cancer with different characteristics. That was me. Learning about the specifics of my diagnosis gave me the confidence to make informed treatment decisions with my doctor. This meant everything to me and my family. So take another look. Ask another question. Learn more at notonetype.org.
kid. The next time I say let's go someplace like Bolivia, let's go someplace like Bolivia. Next time. Ready? No, we'll jump. Yo, what? What you say? Yo, bad. Yo, bad. Yo, bad. Yo, bad. I hope I never make a woman that angry. There are two highly anticipated documentaries opening this weekend, but before we get to them, let's talk about The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Yes, it's one of the more awkward titles of the year. It is based on a novel by John Belairs. It stars Jack Black, Kate Blanchett, Kyle MacLachlan, and the young Owen Vaccaro. It's directed by Eli Roth, which is kind of interesting because Eli Roth uh, is the director of such horror films uh, as Hostel, Knock Knock, Cabin Fever. Uh, he also just did Death Wish earlier this year. So it's interesting that Eli Roth is directing a film that is aimed at uh, families and children. The plot of this one, it's a haunted house, kind of a family-style mystery. Uh, young Lewis, again played by Owen Vaccaro, goes to live with his crazy uncle and aunt in a house that seemingly has deep, dark secrets hidden in its walls. It's really witty. Uh, there's a lot of funny dialogue, some good banter, but the film seems to lose its way the longer that it goes on. It starts off feeling like a film that could have been a classic, uh, one where kids and adults would have walked away happy, but despite being about magic, the film doesn't really possess any. Even still, there's enough here where kids are going to really enjoy themselves. But here's a strong warning, too. Despite the PG rating, there are definitely some very scary sequences that I thought could have and should have landed this one in the PG-13 territory. This is the mildest of recommendations, a good, not great family comedy just in time for Halloween, and I give it the passing grade of a B-. On to the documentaries hitting theaters this week. First off, it's Michael Moore's supercharged political documentary, Fahrenheit 11.9. I'm sick and tired of people telling me that America is the greatest country because we can whip your ass. I hate some of these people, but I'd never kill them. How do you deal with this? You're never going to be able to unsee what you saw. Try to impeach him. Just try it. You will have a spasm of violence in this country like you've never seen. Sort of Acts is a follow-up companion film to his earlier Fahrenheit 9-11, which was all about the Bush presidency. Michael Moore is one of the best argument makers in business, which is why he's the most successful documentarian of all time. But diehard fans of his might be a bit surprised to find out that his latest work isn't just a Donald Trump hit piece. It is that too, don't get me wrong. No, Michael Moore takes on pretty much the entire establishment here. Republicans, Democrats, Hillary, Obama, and especially Michigan Governor Rick Snyder. In fact, the movie is really a film about the ongoing Flint water crisis wrapped in the guise of a rally cry for political activism. Watching the U.S. premiere of the film in Flint, Michigan, alongside residents of Flint, it really made the water crisis hit home in a personal way that sometimes gets lost in the never-ending news cycle. Michael Moore isn't on screen as much as he usually is in his films, but he has a lot more to say here than ever before. This is a wild, all-over-the-place journey that Moore successfully steers home, and in the end, this really truly is a must-watch for all Americans on both sides of the aisle, in my opinion. Unfortunately, Moore's name alone will most likely mean that this movie is equivalent to him just preaching to the choir, but he's hoping his choir really uses their voice like never before come this November. Fahrenheit 11.9 is a classic Michael Moore film. It's a vital, angry cry for help, not just for a nation in turmoil, but for a city left behind. I give it an A-. The other doc in theaters this weekend is not as hard-hitting and is one that everyone should be able to find common ground on. Hi, I'm Gilda Radner, and, uh, <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> 
I can't believe this is her handwriting. This is a real honor. Like, seriously, this is huge. Are these actually her papers? Like, what she... This is, um, Gilda Radner, her voice and her writing. She was the very first performer chosen for the cast of Saturday Night Live. Dan, Rosanna, Rosanna, Dan. From the time I was a kid, I loved to pretend. I can't imagine how I got famous. I just took the next job and millions of people were watching me do it. Love Gilda is a biopic all about the late Gilda Radner. The comedic genius was the breakout star among the original cast of Saturday Night Live. The film's fairly straightforward, but it's a loving remembrance of a singular talent, one that was taken from us all too soon. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll come away with a well-rounded take on who she was and what she did, even if it never really digs all that deep into her psyche. Love Gilda is a fine film, but probably not as special as its subject. I give it a B. There are lots of other films coming out this week, like the Ethan Hawke-directed Blaze and the Kristen Stewart-Chloe Sevigny vehicle Lizzie. For those reviews and more, please check me out on Rotten Tomatoes. Just go to RottenTomatoes.com and click on Critics List, then navigate to my name, Tom Santilli. You'll find all of my reviews there. You can also, of course, follow me on Twitter, at Tom Santilli, and hit up the MovieShowPlus.com website as well. That's all for this week. We'll see you at the movies. invasion, big car chase, truth be told, I was ready to hang it up till I met you today. So you're not from around here. It's hard to explain. I keep having these memories. I see flashes. I think I had a life here. But I can't tell if it's real. We have no idea what threats are out there. We can't do this alone. We need you. I'm not what you think I am. I honestly can't remember why we kept most of this stuff to begin with. Don't you remember that kite? We used to love flying that with mother and father. Those days are long behind me. That's why I live and breathe. hardly to have aged at all. Really? One never discusses a woman's age, Michael. Would have hoped I taught you better. What brings you here after all this time? Same thing that brought me the first time. I've come to look after the bank's children. Us? Oh, yes, you too. We're about to lose our home. Everything's fallen to pieces since your mother. Mother. Nothing's gone forever, only out of place. 
It's a good thing you come along when you did, Mary Poppins. How'd you do that? Do what? So you've been off filling the children's heads with stuff and nonsense. You've forgotten what it's like to be a child. Everything is possible. Even the impossible. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. A Dream Limousine continues to be Metro Detroit's finest luxury transportation service, 734-542-6800. Offering late model luxury SUVs to brand new party buses that seat up to 34 passengers, 734-542-6800. Including the one-of-a-kind Escalade stretch with the exciting jet door. Call 734-542-6800. That's 734-542-6800. A Dream Limousine. Do you know where you are right now? I'm in a drug trial. What do you think is wrong with you? I'm sick. But I don't matter. What would you say this trial is showing you about yourself? Is this therapy now? It's not therapy. It's science. Once you begin to appreciate the structure of the mind, there's no reason to believe that anything about us can't be changed. Pain can be destroyed. The mind can be solved. How many of your subjects have ended up catatonic? Zero. Roughly. My head doesn't work right. I thought maybe these people could fix me. Sounds stupid. That doesn't sound stupid to me. Okay, people, let's begin. In five, four, three, two, one. My mind is playing tricks. reality brain magic shit. I don't know what's real and what's not. Something's wrong. What did you do? Come on, wake up! Every 
every time I separate them, they just find their way back together. You're not protecting those people in there. Check out MovieShowPlus.com to watch this episode online and for exclusive content, extended interviews with Greg Russell, and a complete archive of movie reviews with Tom Santilli. Also, make sure to like and follow us on social media and on our Movie Show Plus YouTube channel. Next time on Movie Show Plus. Join us for the brand new season of Movie Show Plus on October 7th when we'll take a look inside the hit of the Toronto Film Festival, A Star is Born. Almost every single person has told me they like the way I sounded, but that they didn't like the way I look. I think you're beautiful. Any and all views and or opinions expressed by me, Tom Santilli, are fully my own and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of Movie Show Plus, any other critic on the show, or anybody else associated with this program. Further, regardless of the letter grade a movie gets, I strongly encourage all viewers and followers to go see each and every movie that I review, in theaters and on streaming when appropriate, and support your local movie-going establishments. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.